Et toi, c'est pourquoi c'est ici? Three, two, one, take. Dan, talking about the CBC being a lucrative curriculum in our society or nation, between CBC and H4, which one do you think is more profitable to Kenya and Malaysia? Well, I think that CBC is a good curriculum. Yeah. But then the, thing, uh, the strategy we are using to implement it in Kenya is not working. In the sense that what we will end up achieving with CBC is not the quality. In that, um, that train imagine the components of CBC. They need more hands-on skills, they need more, um, I'd say, equipment and every, all of this stuff that are not even available in schools in the very rural areas. Yeah? So it means that we are creating a margin in terms of um, the rich and the poor, actually the poor will continue to be the poor because of the quality of education they get. And then uh, someone who is in, let's say someone in Turkana, and we don't have computers there, probably we don't even have the electricity to operate these computers. So how are we achieving uh, the same goals in terms of uh, the expectations of CBC? And then also to, to shed some light there that uh, one of the key competences of CBC is uh, digital literacy. Yeah. So it means that these kids will even achieve this component, which is very important and crucial uh, at this age and time. But, but Dan, students, uh, not students rather, parents complain, especially in the village, that this CBC curriculum is much more expensive than CBC. It's like a burden to parents. So as a government, as an educational expert or education stakeholder, what do you think can be done by the government officials to make this curriculum work for both students, the government, and parents? Uh, I fully agree, it's expensive. I've talked to CBC, I've talked to CBC, and uh, CBC requires a lot of items, I just said, items and equipment, and even the books, I don't know if you the word bought books for one of the babies and I think the total cost was around seven pounds. Now try and imagine, get that picture, maybe a parent of the senior in the county, someone who is trying to find maybe hunger and the most crucial things in life. And now the education system is very, very expensive in that you have to spend seven thousand. You understand? Yes. And they don't have a good book for lunch. So you find that uh, it's expensive. So what you can say the government can do is uh, they try and get parents. In that let's uh, let's facilitate more resources to the local areas. Let's make sure that these people already have the items that are required. Because uh, for the urban centers like Nairobi or Dracul, these parents are able in a way, not fully, but in a way they are able to uh, these items. Okay. Thank you, Dan, for elaborating the much more about CBC. I think for parents in the, in the village, for students in the village, is able now to understand what CBC is all about. Okay, let's come back to our discussion with the leadership in Ghana. You say you are a leader in the of Catholic, uh, Catholic University of Central Africa. It's more so a specific uh, class. Of people. What interested you in being? Uh, Chair of the clubs in society. Um, so what happened? Um, I did some parts in 2020, yeah. that was post COVID, I think the first slot of post COVID. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was so happy that I was getting into the clubs. Because if you know this is for sure where I'm going to be up in the middle of the world, where I'm going to be up in the middle of the So, you know, this uh, university leadership is hard to be there. So I, I think I made it a, a priority. You see the way you said to me, so I made it a goal that I have to do this with you. And I started by serving as a military languages department. And then when I was still in the school council, I realized that uh, there's a clubs committee. You know this something was So uh, one day I was in the office because I was part of a club area. And uh, I went to the club's, the club's office. And then I realized that that chair person was alone. The other leaders would think they were either on the person or judgment or they were just a mm -hmm. So I realized there was a gap. And then I offered to the chair. Understand? So I volunteered. And then a post was created for me at that time. So I became the club's administrator. So, 
it was so obvious that uh, one of the next months was a lot of experience and that office. I worked with all the other people to make sure everything that's nice, Mr. Dan. Like, uh, as a leader, you know, the story is ups and downs. As a leader, you face challenges, you face opposition from the other side. Maybe the people who are also not contesting for the same seat, maybe someone who is interested in having that seat as the chair of clubs in society. What challenges have you encountered as clubs chair in your school? There's so many. I think this is a normal thing. In that, uh, I think I'm not equal in terms of what I'm doing. I don't like the same structure, but this is how things are going to be set. I'm not sure on this part. I came and I just want us to try and try to get to see. This is what we need to do. I'm going to go to the airport to achieve that. So I, when I came to the clubs community, uh, I tried to do this for many years. And I feel like the clubs are so hard to get to us here. They are a bit comfortable in that this now becomes a test. They don't want to push themselves to the extra levels. You know? And then you're here, you want to achieve those goals. You want, uh, you have a vision that you, you know, before people buy your vision, it takes time, it takes months. So I think uh, there's a challenge in terms of bringing everyone to the same level. But clubs officials are wrong, that this is what we want us to do. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, um, and also another challenge is in clubs, also in clubs it's financial issues because you see clubs need money. Yeah, so exactly. Say that activities need money. And I'll say you know we don't have we are not yet there in terms of financial uh, we are trying to we are trying to show the school now. It's more showing the school that why should we invest in these clubs? So we have a money. So as a leader or as a leader Head of clubs and societies in, uh, at Catholic University. You know, the, the time when you be done with your studies at Catholic University of Eastern Africa, or maybe you will move to the next level of not being just a leader of clubs and societies. You will leave that club's office for another person to take over. And you know, a leader is uh, rated by his track record based on what he has done, what he has achieved. So far, what have we achieved as the leader that we're going to leave? in the office of clubs and societies for the next leader to be at Mark? Uh, it's been a wonderful moment mm -hmm. and I'd say we have achieved so much in a very short time. Yeah. When I say we, I mean, um, I've not done this alone, I've had other people who have done this For example, I've had a very, uh, a very supportive clubs community mm -hmm. with three, uh, three, three persons and then uh, clubs officials, they are amazing people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I told you it was so hard to bring them to the same. But immediately, immediately they understood my idea and what I wanted us to achieve. We worked together and what we have achieved right now is synergy in terms of uh, in the clubs, clubs coming together and doing a set of activities. So that means that we are actually expanding and uh, I mean, pushing ourselves to more potential together. And also in terms of clubs, I think this is the first year in May that students in the middle of the class, we've done PDFs, we've done um, uh, advertisements, and we've actually we've said for, for the students in the middle of the class, for the very first time from in history, have we seen clubs coming out in the activities, and clubs have been a centre of students, uh, students trying to in terms of finance. Yes, we have achieved so much in terms of what it comes to be. Okay, thank you, Dan, for that elaborate, uh, and elaborate uh, information about your track record and achievement. I know we are running out of time, but before we wind up for our uh, show today, as a leader, when you are an MCA, you are targeting to be an MP in the future. When you are an MP, you are targeting maybe to be a senator, to be a governor. Are you uh, targeting to remain as clubs here? You have visions. Uh, obviously, I can't be the next clubs to person. I need to also transition to the next level. Um, we are probably, I have thoughts of, uh, of getting to the next level with our application. We probably need to do this. Okay. Out of university leadership, maybe let's look at uh, nationwide figures. Once you have done with university, which seat are you admiring outside there, politically? Well, yes, yeah. Uh, I'm very certain that I'll be there. Uh, area MP, Mwala, in 2022. So uh, I have a, 
I won't say a certain thing because we all have different things that I'm doing this coming to the end. But I want to start uh, a community uh, project, 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 a community project. Um, we are probably just going to start next year. So we, we put people into smaller groups and then we provide them with training. We provide them with uh, uh, chicks yeah. and get them on market. So it's more about accelerating economic growth in Ireland and South Africa. So I realize, you know, really probably uh, irrigation is not effective because it probably not happen. We don't have enough water. But then there are other aspects of agriculture, which are a very really high source of revenue in this country yeah. that we can venture as a region. So when, when you do that, I think people will see. I'll get a chance now to interact with people and then be able to see my potential and what what I want them to achieve together. What I have. More also on the issue of uh, job employment, eradication of poverty, and the issue of food security and nutrition of life. Thank you very much, Dan, for that fruitful conversation. You know, I'm, I'm wishing you all the best when you come 2032. They are seniors, they for that. Area. I'll also be glad to host you as the new parliament for Mala Constituency. I'm for sure. Dan, before we finish for before we finish our show, maybe just a word of advice to tell you to the youth or young about leadership, about education, anything of advice you can tell to young people for age. Yeah, uh, what I'll tell every youth who is there watching this show is that one, I know there's the issue of uh, there are no jobs in Kenya and all that, but I'm here today to remind you one thing that jobs have always been created for you. Yeah. Opportunities are always there. It's about how aggressive are we in terms of what building the right networks and uh, building even the right skill set and also adaptability. I've seen many youths uh, in this generation where if I'm doing education, see I said I'm doing education, I don't think about will I be a marketer? Yeah. You see? So it's about I have to go to class. And also um, thinking that uh, having done education uh, in terms of a degree, I can only teach in a, in a Kenyan school. Have I thought of other avenues that you can use um, technical and uh, my technical skills maybe to, to venture into? And then the other thing to remind you about soft skills, which are very important, in terms of communication skills, interpersonal relations. Uh, because one, technical skills will give you the job, but then the soft skills will help you maintain that job. Because if you can't relate someone with people in, uh, in that office or in that office, it becomes uh, hard for you to sustain the job. The other thing is that I want to ask all to find the value in uh, making impact. Well, we need to attach significance and service in whatever we do. Yeah. In that, um, if I know it's more of getting to your passion, the area of passion. I know I'm very passionate about poultry farming. So for everything I have to do, I have to think about uh, the impact in the service. It's a follow your passion. Because if you follow your passion for sure, everyone has a space in this world. There's that part uh, in this world that expects and you're the only person who can fill that space. It's about passion, service, and significance, the right skill set, the right attitude, and then also being very aggressive in terms of building the right networks at this time. Thank you, Dan. I'm much more grateful for hosting you today. You have elaborated much about yourself. You have advised uh, youth of your age, and at least youth you've heard from Daniel Wenger that you can be employed away, away from, you can be employed away from uh, what you have schooled, what you said, you can take another path and become the most successful young people. Thank you, Dan. I'm looking forward to hosting you next time as uh, an executive leader, you know, maybe next time in the constituency. To be always uh, nice to interact with you, to interact with you in my show, and also to hear more about you and also to advise the youth. That marks the end of our show today with our guest of honor, none other than Dan Mwendwa. Thank you for daily care for next to thank you for hosting us. Thank you for our cameraman, uh, Mr. Bramwell, for also recording us, and thank you for uh, uh, camera assistant, none other than Patrick, for also hosting us. See you then next time on the dialogue here, where leadership, governance, and all the conversation regarding student leadership is concerned. Thank you, and God bless you. Watch, subscribe, like, and share our show. My name is Brian Craig. <laughs> I always try to have a